Watch out! You're gonna crash! Ah! Ah! I love Crash Bandicoot. Who doesn't, really? I mean, I would imagine most of you guys do, too. Because if you don't, I really don't know why you would be here watching me talk about Crash Bandicoot. I mean, unless you just love my stuff. The original trilogy? Awesome! Crash Team Racing? Fantastic! Crash Bash? <laughs> Crash Bash aside, the Orange Bandicoot was this symbol of excellence in the early years of the PS1. And once the PS2 came around, naturally there was a lot of hype to see the series that you once loved jump ship to greater waters. However, Naughty Dog lost the rights to Crash, Traveler's Tales was set to make the next main game in the series, and, if you recall, Wrath of Cortex kinda sucked. Oh snap, we're really getting into it now! This is gonna be an adventure. Let's start with the story. Oh boy! Uka Uka has a ring around his glow graphic. Ah, we're off to a good start here! So, after multiple failures, Dr. Neo Cortex and company are deciding what to do next. It turns out, Cortex has a secret weapon that he's been working on, but he lacks a special power source. Uka Uka suggests getting help from the Elementals, a group of evil masks, each representing a different element. Earth! Water! Fire! Air! With our powers combined, this is a really, really lazy plot point. I mean, what's next? You're gonna bring back a bad guy you thought was already dead since you were too lazy to come up with someone new? Oh no, wait, I'm sorry, Spyro already has that covered. Thanks to the elementals, as well as those power crystals Cortex likes so much, he manages to finally harness this new power and bring his secret weapon to life! It's another Bandicoot! Well, I mean, why not? Fight fire with fire, you know what I'm saying? He knows what I'm saying. Ultimately, it's another case of Good Bandicoot stops Evil Doctor from... Uh, you know, I really don't even know. He never really says what his plan is anymore, aside from defeating Crash. What a way to live your life. All jokes aside, I'm actually okay with the whole extra mask thing. Mostly because the developers somehow got a pretty notable voice cast. Like Mark Hamill, the voice of Batman from the animated series, R. Lee Ermey, the famous sergeant from Full Metal Jacket, and even Thomas F. Wilson, who was Biff from Back to the Future. And now, I'm free to pulverize whatever gets in my way. So why don't you make like a tree and get out of here? Hashtag movie reference. Hashtag joke wasn't even all that funny. Hashtag, but who cares? I got to talk about Back to the Future, one of the best movies. Now, if I were to ask you what your least favorite type of level in a platformer is, what would you say? Exactly! An ice level. And what is the first level of Wrath of Cortex? Maybe it's me, you know, maybe I'm the dumb one. It just seems very odd to me that a platformer would start with an ice level, of all things. Does, does that not seem weird to anybody else? So Wrath of Cortex already starts off pretty fishy, but when it comes to the level itself... It's a level, all right. Nothing really too special there. It's your standard run-of-the-mill Crash Bandicoot level. Linear hallway, a bunch of enemies, a bunch of boxes, you get the idea. I did also find it really enjoyable doing this whenever I got onto a moving platform. Something about the weird lighting and his weird face made it oddly satisfying. Next up is an airplane level. It's pretty simple, there's a bunch of machines flying around and it's your job to shoot them. Third level. Suddenly, Super Monkey Ball! But, but with the Bandicoot, you get the idea. It's very odd, these are actually kinda fun to play, I just don't know why they're here. Also, for no real reason, all those bosses you once thought were threatening, they're just kinda chilling out as obstacles now. Okay. So after two pretty odd vehicle levels, it's time for some good old running and jumping again. And honestly, these levels really aren't all that bad. The level designs are admittedly pretty boring and lack much in terms of challenge, but they play well enough and at the very least, you don't gotta deal with- <laughs> is, is that a dragon? I seriously cannot tell with that face. The final level of the first area takes place in a minecar. Ah! 
That's the big thing with Crash Wrath of Cortex. It's mainly an overload of vehicles. On top of the ones I already covered, there's a Jeep, water level with the occasional Beatles reference, a flying robotic bug, a propeller backpack. There are so many of them! But hey, you even get to play as Coco a couple times. She plays like Crash, but not good. Like, what is this move? Good on you, Coco. You go, you go get him. Oh man, it's a giant tsunami! Good thing I have my scooter. Just gotta get past this door, and yes, we locked out that pesky giant deadly wave of water. That'll show it. So I just guess the developers looked at Crash 2 and 3, realized that they couldn't possibly top the core platforming they saw, and just decided to throw every idea they had into this new game instead of being kinda clever. Spoiler, it, it didn't really work. And I don't know, sometimes the sound balancing seems a bit off, but you tell me, I, I can't really hear anymore. I'm not saying that Crash 2 and 3 simply cannot be topped. I mean, Crash Twin Sanity was completely over the top ridiculous, but I loved that game. I mostly loved that game. Wrath of Cortex suffers from an identity crisis. It either wants to emulate the games that made Crash great in the first place, or wants to make sure that every level is different just for the sake of every level being different, regardless if the mechanics are polished or not. Like the water levels. Holy crap, they're bad. I will give the game some credit though. The bosses are actually pretty neat. They're all just an encounter with Crunch. Oh, that's, uh, that's the Bandicoot's name, by the way using the power of one of the elementals to help him out. They're not particularly challenging, except for this one because, oh yeah, I saw that coming. But I kinda like the idea of all the bosses being this one enemy using different powers every time. So it's probably the most original thing the game has going for it, so credit where credit is due. And just like Crash 3, once you beat a boss, you get a new ability. They're mostly familiar ones like the Super Spin and Fruit Bazooka, but the big new one of the group is sneaking for use when you encounter an obnoxiously long string of nitro crates. That is literally the only time you will use it. I, I don't even really have a comment on that one. It's, it's just really dumb. Oh, and as for why I'm playing this on the GameCube rather than PS2, the load times on the latter are ridiculously long in comparison. That's like... That's like really the only reason. The adventure culminates with a battle against Crunch, Dr. Cortex, and all four elementals at once. And it's actually a pretty cool fight, if not a bit too random. But for a final fight, it gets the job done pretty well. After they're all taken care of, we're treated to a cutscene. Now I didn't get all the gems in my playthrough, because that would require me playing this level again, and I refuse to do that. So instead, Uka Squared goes on to tell us how the bad guys aren't quite done yet because they still have those precious shiny stones, and thanks to that, they can bring back the elementals as many times as they want, which seems like overkill, but I mean... What? I gotta hand it to you, I gotta hand it to you. That was one of the most jarring endings to a video game I have seen in my entire life. Oh, Cortex, we're not done yet. Dancing. <laughs> so no, I didn't go back afterwards and get all the gems or the time relics for that matter. You do get a few more levels to play by doing so, but honestly, I just could not bring myself to do it. And besides, all that really changes is Crunch turns good, and the pair of bad guys, Cortex and Uka Uka, end up getting stuck in ice, leading to the opening bits of Twin Sanity. The fact there is actually some Crash Bandicoot story continuity is the coolest part about the whole thing. Wrath of Cortex didn't do as well as we'd hoped, and- <laughs> Fish? If you are a fan of Crash Bandicoot, then you've probably already given this game a shot, and I know there have to be people out there who genuinely like this game. And hell, I have a lot of nostalgia for it. This is the first game I played on PlayStation 2. That's kind of a big deal when you're a kid, but nowadays... Yeah. I've already done a video on this game, but man, after playing Wrath of Cortex, it makes me like this game even more. Crash Twin Sanity is definitely the better game of the two. For the most part. Yeah. 
Hey there! If you missed it, I brought back my Let's Play channel from the dead, and I am currently playing the original Crash Bandicoot. The channel is Ant Dude Plays, and you should go check it out. It's good times all around, trust me, I can assure you. It's because I'm on it. It's, yeah. Thanks for watching the video, everyone! Hope you all enjoyed it. And if you did, clicking the like button and subscribing would be super duper cool and stuff. If you want to see the video I made on Twin Sanity, you can jump right to it here as well. Follow me on Twitter, check out my other videos, you, 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 get, you, you get the idea at this point. That covers it. I am out of here. Bye bye